In this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can qualify for a hyperlane airdrop. Now, after Wormhole and Layer Zero, I think that hyperlane is probably one of the next S tier or top tier airdrop targets for bridges or interoperability protocols. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through a bunch of different tasks that you can complete to make sure that you qualify. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need to have at least an Ethereum or an EVM wallet and a Cosmos ecosystem wallet like Kepler or Leap. Now, there's a bunch of different bridges and applications that we can use that are going to interact with the Hyperlane protocol. The Nexus bridge is one of the main ones, but there's also going to be Nautilus. There's going to be Merkley, the Injective EVM bridge, Squid Router, Trader Joe we're going to use to do a couple of swaps and then also Superform, which I've previously released a full tutorial on, also interacts with the Hyperlane protocol. This isn't literally everything, but if you do all of the steps that I'm going to show you right now, then your wallet will be in a solid position to qualify for a Hyperlane airdrop. So for starters, let's discuss the Nexus bridge. We can use this to bridge between a couple of different Cosmos chains like Celestia and Injective and Neutron, but we can also hit some EVM chains. Honestly, don't even think about using the Ethereum mainnet. It's going to be way too expensive but we can use Manta and Arbitrum as a part of this. So let's go ahead and start off by connecting a wallet. I'm gonna connect my Cosmos wallet first because I've got some assets on there that I'm going to transfer. Now let's start with an IBC transfer using the Hyperlane network. So Celestia, Injective, and Neutron are all within the Cosmos ecosystem. Transferring between those networks is quite cheap and quite fast. Now in this case, I have a small amount of TIA, so I'll just try and bridge some of this from Celestia to the Neutron network. And once you connect your wallet, all you have to do is select the amount. It automatically detects how much you have. So let's say I'm gonna transfer 0.1 TIA from the Celestia network to Neutron. Now for recipient address, just select self and it will detect your wallet address for Neutron, which is just a different network within the Cosmos ecosystem. Then hit continue and send to Neutron. Once you do that, it's gonna pop up in the wallet asking you to confirm the transaction and it's super cheap. So that first transaction was a success. Now, if I open up my Kepler wallet, I can see that I have some TIA on the Neutron network. If it doesn't show up for you automatically, you can click here, click Manage Chain Visibility, and then just search for the Neutron network and make sure that you've enabled it. I could also transfer TIA tokens to the Arbitrum network and a couple of other options in here as well. So you can mess around with this bridge and see how many different types of transactions you can do. So let's say, for example, I want to send a little bit of TIA to Arbitrum. Let's send 0.09, just need to leave enough to pay for some gas fees. For recipient address, you can't click self if you haven't connected your MetaMask wallet. Uh, you can connect another wallet here, select Ethereum, and then select the ETH wallet that you want to connect. So let's go ahead and connect my EVM wallet. Now, if I go back over here and click self, it will automatically detect my Ethereum wallet address. Uh, okay, so transferring to the Arbitrum L2 actually does cost a lot more if you want to do a transaction just to hit that chain. It's probably a good idea. I didn't fund this wallet with enough TIA to go ahead and actually do this right now. But if you do want to bridge from Arbitrum to Neutron, then it might actually be cheaper to buy the token on Arbitrum and then do the bridge transfer. And if you're wondering where you can get some TIA in, as I alluded to at the beginning, the Trader Joe application is one such exchange where you can get some TIA in. So let's say I wanted to swap just a small amount of ETH for some TIA. I could make that transaction right here. Now the cost for doing so is a little bit high because gas fees are quite high right now, but let's go ahead and confirm that transaction. Then to add it to the wallet, I'm just gonna open this up in the Explorer here, click on the TIA and token, and then click add it to Web3 wallet so that I can check my balance and don't forget that I have it. Then with the TIA tokens, TIA and tokens in my wallet, I can go back to the Nexus bridge and send them from Arbitrum to Neutron. So let's go ahead and send the maximum amount. Select self, which is my Neutron address for my Cosmos wallet. Hit continue and then send it to Neutron. The transfer went through and if I open up my Kepler wallet, now I have 0.78 TIA on Neutron. So this is a good way to build up volume for sure for Hyperlane. Anyways, that is the Hyperlane Nexus bridge. Let's move now 
to other ways that you can interact with Hyperlane. So this right here is the Nautilus bridge and we can send assets from Binance to Nautilus and that is going to interact with Hyperlane. You can see it's built with Hyperlane. So let's go ahead and send 0.01 ETH from Binance to Nautilus. I'm going to select myself as the recipient, hit continue and then hit approve transfer. Now this is gonna be a two-step transaction because it's wrapped ETH on Binance and I have to approve the spending of it and then I have to actually approve the transfer of it. So here's the second step of this process, 19 cents to actually send it. And now that I've bridged that wrapped ETH from Binance to Nautilus, in order to bridge it back, I'm first going to need to get the gas token for the Nautilus network, which is actually ZBC, the super random token. An easy way that you can get it though is by using Jumper Exchange to go from one of the coins on Binance. I have some USDT in this wallet. So I'm gonna swap USDT into ZBC on Binance, bridge it over to Nautilus Network using the Nautilus bridge, and then bridge the wrapped ETH back. And you don't need too much in order to actually do this. So I'm going to swap $5 of USDT for about 270 ZBC tokens. Let's go ahead and make this transaction here. And this is another airdrop qualifier that we get by interacting with Jumper, which is great and I learned about this route from CC2 on Twitter. And when that transaction goes through, if you want to see the token in your wallet, click see details and then click on this right here. It's going to open up the transaction link and you can find the ZBEC or ZBC token. Click on that and then add this to your wallet. You'll notice there's a button that says add token to Web3 wallet. And if you click that, it will pop up, allow you to see the balance. So a little bit complicated, but if you follow all those steps, you should be good. Then we can go back to the Nautilus bridge and actually reverse this. I'm going to bridge the ZBC that I have from Binance over to Nautilus. It wouldn't let me transfer the full amount for some reason. So I'm going to transfer just a tiny bit less than the maximum amount, 269. Hit send to Nautilus and confirm this transaction. So that's another Hyperlane interaction right there. Okay, so that transfer went through. It might take a minute or two, but now I should be able to go from Nautilus back to Binance using that wrapped ETH. And since I have just a small amount of the gas fee on Nautilus, we'll be good. Now there's also actually a connection to Solana and you can swap into the ZBC token on Solana and you can bridge on the Nautilus bridge using Solana as well. So probably a good idea to hit that network as well. So I'm just going to bridge the ETH back to Binance from Nautilus. Let's go ahead. Actually, let me see if I can bridge it to Solana. Let's try that. I'll bridge. Oh no, you can only bridge ZBC to Solana. Okay, so I'm gonna go from Nautilus back to Binance with the wrapped ETH, and then we're gonna move on to the next Hyperlane interaction. We're gonna keep adding on. Now, as I go through this process here, let me just briefly discuss overall strategy, because as with any bridge or interoperability protocol, one of the things that you need to do is to move as much volume as you can. So the higher the value of the tokens or the assets that you're transferring, the better it will probably be for the airdrop. And then the number of transactions matters as well as the unique weeks, months, or years that you transact in. At this point, obviously, I think years is out of the question, but if you can try and do a couple of transactions here and there, maybe once a week or at least every couple of weeks until they actually announce the airdrop, then that will help you out as well. And the earlier you get started, the better. All right, let's move on from the Nautilus bridge to Merkley now. So they have interactions with layer zero, Wormhole, don't do that because the airdrop's already done, Polyhedra, and also Hyperlane. And with Hyperlane, you can bridge NFTs and tokens, basically testnet tokens. They don't have a gas refuel feature yet, but they say that it's coming soon. So let's do a bridge of an HNFT and HFT using Merkley, and each of these is gonna trigger different Hyperlane transactions. Now, these are the different options that we can use to bridge HNFTs. And another thing that I'll mention in terms of general strategy is that you should probably try to use as many different networks as you can, because different source and destination chains could be a criteria for the airdrop. So let's say I'm going to use Avalanche now, and I'm going to bridge an HNFT to the Celo network. I would first mint an NFT. It's going to ask me to change the network here in my wallet. And this is just a generic NFT that has no image, no value, but mint the NFT costs about 75 cents there. And then the next step is to bridge it. Now, this I would say is a lower priority Hyperlane airdrop task than some of the other ones where you can move volume because I'm not sure that bridging these NFTs is gonna have nearly as much of an impact as, for example, bridging one ETH or 1,000 USDC or something like that. 
However, it does trigger a different transaction with Hyperlane and it could be useful. So this next transaction here is gonna cost me probably about 40 cents total. So the total cost for this bridging of an NFT from Avalanche to the Celo network is like a dollar and 15, dollar and 20 cents, depending on gas fees. Kind of like throwing money away, hoping that it's gonna come back in the form of a Hyperlane airdrop. And then the HFT bridge is where we're going to select a random amount of tokens to claim. These are just generic tokens. Let's go ahead and claim them on a different network, maybe Polygon and send them to Gnosis Chain. Now, I recommend that you can't claim a small amount of tokens. The fee for doing so is going to be less. If you try to claim like a thousand tokens, it's gonna to cost you a couple bucks. If you just claim 10 tokens, the total cost is going to be seven cents here. So let's go ahead and confirm this transaction. Now, once you claim those HMERC tokens, you just wanna select the full amount and bridge them to a different network. You can actually split it up if you want, bridge five to one network, five to a different network, it doesn't really matter but each transaction is triggering another interaction with Hyperlane. So that's pretty much all we can do with Merkly. When they actually launch their refuel feature, you can also refuel via Hyperlane, which is a useful tool as well. Moving on, let's talk about this new injective bridge. You can use this to bridge from injective to the injective EVM network and Ethereum mainnet, but as I already mentioned, you should just skip that if you want to save your wallet. Now this goes either way. So wherever you have your assets, that's gonna be where you want to start. If you don't have injective tokens on either the injective EVM or the injective Cosmos network, you can actually get them by using Merkley's refuel feature on the layer zero tab. They have a refuel feature here for layer zero that hits the injective EVM. So we're throwing a couple of random other airdrop qualifying transactions in and this will allow you to send a small amount to actually receive gas on the other end. So let's say I wanna receive 0.01 injective on injective EVM. I'll send some Matic from Polygon, and this is gonna cost me 0.68 Matic in order to receive that to pay for gas on the injective side. But let's go ahead and hit refuel here and then confirm the transaction in the wallet. Now, if I wanted to get a larger amount of capital onto one of the two injective networks, I could actually use Squid Router and I can send some assets from Binance to Injective if I just scroll down here or search for it and select the Injective network. Now this is gonna first ask me to add my Injective wallet address. So I'll connect my Kepler wallet here and approve the Injective network connection. And then I can select which asset I want to send from Binance and have it come out the other end as the Injective token on the Injective network. So let's actually go ahead and send the remaining balance of this USDT I have on Binance. And so this is gonna come out as 0.447 Injective on the Injective network taking a very small amount of slippage, not bad. So let's go ahead and do this transaction here. And then we can go back and use the injective to injective EVM bridge. So the total cost for this transaction was just over $1.30 with the approval of the token spending and then the actual bridge itself. And we're really increasing the airdrop surface area here by hitting all of these different apps like Squid Router. So that actually went through, it didn't take too long. And now if we go back over to the injective bridge here, I can see the balance of those injective tokens that I have and I can bridge most of them to the injective EVM network by connecting both of my wallets here, the Cosmos Kepler wallet and the Ethereum wallet. In this case, I'm using MetaMask. So I'll select the recipient address here, hit continue, and then confirm this transaction. And this is a super cheap transaction because all of the Cosmos interactions are quite cheap. So that is going, and that is a good way to build up some solid volume because it's relatively cheap. You can go from an EVM network, it doesn't have to be Binance, to Injective on Squid Router, and then you can go back to the Injective bridge, bridge to the Injective EVM, and then bridge from the Injective EVM to a different EVM network, and sort of cycle through that process over a period of days, weeks, months, whatever. Now with the Injective EVM, my refuel doesn't appear to have actually gone through yet. It's taking a little while with Merkley, but my actual transfer from the Injective Cosmos network went through, and I can actually send a little bit back if I want to, by just toggling this here, reversing the process. So let's say I'm gonna send half of it back to my wallet, my injective wallet, hit continue, send to injective, and confirm the transaction here. And this is a pretty cheap way to actually run up the volume. As you can see, it's costing me basically a penny to send this transaction. So if you're trying to establish bridge volume, 
this is a good way to do it. And then the final thing that I wanna show you is Superform. I actually made a full tutorial on this, but every time you make a deposit or a withdrawal from Superform, as long as it's cross chain, you're triggering interactions with both Layer Zero and Hyperlane. So this is a great multi airdrop qualifier. And the way that it works is you make a deposit into one of these different vaults to earn yield but you deposit from one network to a different network and then it bridges the funds for you in order to actually make the deposit into the vault. And those cross chain transactions trigger hyperlane interactions. So previously when I made my other tutorial on Superform, I made a deposit from Optimism to Base, which did trigger that transaction with hyperlane. And in this video, if I withdraw my assets by clicking here on withdraw, then this is going to trigger another transaction. So you can use Superform to actually earn a yield or if you're a dgen airdrop farmer you can just deposit and withdraw assets from the platform in order to trigger transactions with these different interoperability protocols now one important thing to note is that you don't want to go to and from the same network because that actually won't trigger a cross-chain transaction so let's say i'm going to withdraw into usdc on the polygon network first i would just hit simulate withdraws to make sure that this is actually going to go through okay the simulation was successful. So let's go ahead and actually make this withdrawal here. It's gonna cost me a couple bucks to make this transaction, but like I said, it should be worth it because each time it interacts with Hyperlane. So that withdraw transaction was initiated. It says it could take up to 30 minutes, but you can click here to track it on the Blockchain Explorer and confirm that it's going to interact with Layer Zero and Hyperlane. Now that is not literally everything that you can do to qualify for the Hyperlane airdrop, but if you do all of the steps that I showed you and then run up your transaction volume, the transaction value, and hit a bunch of unique months and weeks, then I can guarantee that you will be in a solid position for this airdrop when it actually comes. And if you missed the wormhole or the W token drop, then the best time to get started working on these next ones is now. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.